Does a primitive species of hominid lurk in the Florida swamps? Find out on today's episode of Into the Unexplained. Hi, I'm David Wood, USA Today best-selling author of Adventure and Thrillers, and today we're going to talk about the Florida skunk ape. The Florida skunk ape is a cryptid, which is an animal whose existence is theorized but has not yet been proven. It is said to live in the swamps and the forests of the southeastern United States, especially in the Everglades in Florida. And it's considered to be an ape-like creature, sort of like a small Bigfoot. And no, we are not talking about the idiots in Georgia who stuff some guts into a costume. That really happened. And I'm from Georgia. Sorry, it's not everybody, just those guys. Now, sightings of the Florida skunk ape go all the way back to Florida's indigenous people. The Seminole culture includes stories of a foul-smelling, physically powerful and secretive creature called Esti Kapaki, a name which roughly translates into furry tall man or hairy giant. They're a very literal people. Over the centuries, the skunk ape has been spotted in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, and has been part of local folklore ever since the first arrival of European settlers in the New World. But there's a problem with hominid sightings in Florida, because Florida is the home to another lower primate, Florida Man. Now, to be clear, Florida Man is a stereotype. We usually associate it with certain socioeconomic groups, but really it can encompass any man or woman who does something extremely foolish, maybe under the influence, maybe not. But it's a stereotype that's become pretty common in the U.S. And there's a fun game to play. You can actually Google Florida man and your birthday, do an image search and see what pops up. It's pretty ubiquitous. So as we go through a number of these skunk ape sightings, we're going to play a little game called Skunk Ape or Florida Man. In 1929, a sighting occurred at the famous and then recently constructed Perky Bat Tower in the Florida Keys. Witnesses reported that an unknown ape-like creature was drawn to the construction site, and after inspecting the bat tower for a little while, the creature shook the tower, driving off the bats before running off into the woods. You know, I mean, it's possible that an average Florida man would go that deep into the wilderness just to shake a bat tower, but I don't like that one, so I'll give this one to the skunk ape. In 1942, a man in Suwannee County reported a similar creature rushing out from the brush line while he was driving down an isolated road. It was alleged to have grabbed onto his vehicle and beat on the running board and door for half a mile before departing. It's not the kind of behavior we typically get reported from other primates, and I can absolutely see a drunken, crazy Florida man coming and beating on the running board of a car, trying to ride along. But it could be the skunk ape. I'll call this one a draw. In the 1960s, there was a rash of sightings in central Florida around Alachua County and Marion County. One such report from 1963 came from a family who said that an ape-like creature was lurking around their home and even peeked in the window once. Not good enough for me. Need some footprints, need some photos. It could be anybody lurking around there. It could even, crazy it sounds, be a deer. If it's dark, it's forested, you're not expecting it, maybe you're a little freaked out, something pokes its head up to the window, your brain naturally tries to turn it into something we understand. We don't expect other types of animals to peek into our window, so our subconscious instinctively turns it into something human. I'm going to give this one to Florida man or other. Reports of the skunk ape were particularly common from the 1950s through the 1970s, right around the same time that UFO sightings were common. In the 1970s, two Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies reported that an ape-like creature stalked them through a grove before they shot at it with their firearms. They reported following a trail of footprints to where they recovered some hair snagged on a barbed wire fence that appeared to have been pushed down. It could go either way. It's your typical 
It's night, you're freaked out, you see something shaped like a human, but in the darkness it appears larger, it appears fuzzy because of the lack of light, you think of it as an ape. But at the same time, these are police officers. You would think that they're accustomed to at least being under a little bit more duress than the average person. And they did find some hair that I, I'm gonna give them credit and presume that they knew it was not human hair. So we'll give this one to the skunk ape. In July of 1997, an Everglades tour operator reported that a stand that he had baited with lima beans had been raided and he noticed strange tracks around it. So he baited several other locations and pretty soon multiple witnesses started reporting skunk ape sightings in those areas. He and others attributed it to flooding, which might have driven the skunk ape into these higher areas where he put the baited traps. And they claimed that weather, high humidity, and the remote location would make it unlikely that it's a hoax or a human. Well, let's be real. All he really identified was missing lima beans. And it's an interesting coincidence that this is not a park ranger. This is a tour operator, someone who makes their money taking people into the Everglades and showing them a good time. And you know, it's pretty easy for him to say, you know, folks, I found a stand with lima beans that were missing and there were crazy tracks around it. I'm not saying it's the skunk ape, but I've baited a bunch of traps, so keep your eyes open. As soon as that subconscious suggestion is planted in someone's mind, then it's perfectly natural for them to see something moving in the swamp. Maybe it's a reddish fur of an animal, could be a deer, maybe it's a person moving. That seems less likely because of the location, but that suggestion is in their mind. And it's quite a coincidence. So because of the person's economic incentive and human nature, I'm going to give this one to Florida Man. Also in 1997, a fire district chief in Okeechobee released a photograph of a dark figure that he claims was a skunk ape. He said he saw it moving across the road. He stopped and took a photograph. And shortly thereafter, there suddenly sprang up a lot of skunk ape sightings in that same area. Now this is another one like I was talking about. You plant the suggestion in people's minds and suddenly there's a lot of sighting. Now it is possible that, yeah, maybe he really did see a skunk ape and then other people saw that same skunk ape. So I'm not discounting it, but I'm highly skeptical because it's quite the coincidence. So I'm giving this one to Florida man. In 2000, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office received an anonymous letter along with two photographs of a hairy ape-like creature. The author of the letter said that she was an elderly woman who had been missing apples. They'd been taken off of her back porch. She lived near I-75, which is a very large interstate highway. And one night, she took photographs of what she thought was stealing the apples, and it was this creature. At first, she thought this was someone's escaped pet, because it, at first glance, it looks a lot like an orangutan. But upon further inspection, she and her family decided that, no, maybe it's something else. They thought it didn't quite look right to be an orangutan, so they sent it in. And this became a pretty controversial photo. It became nicknamed the Mayaka Swamp Monster. And some people say, yes, it looks like an escaped orangutan. Other people say, no, this is obviously photoshopped. And they point to a famous Bigfoot statue in a Ripley Museum that they say strongly resembles this photograph. And then some people say, yeah, that, that could be a wild creature. When I look at it, I lean more toward escaped animal, but I don't know how many orangutans actually get loose there. Um, but given how large I-75 is, I find it difficult to believe that large primates who are living in a population large enough to perpetuate, but small enough to go undiscovered would be lurking that close to a major interstate. So I'm going with Florida, man. Now, these are only just a handful of sightings. They have been happening for hundreds of years, and they continue even to present day, with 48 out of 67 counties in Florida reporting sightings since 2010. So this isn't going away. The idea is firmly planted in people's minds and in tradition, and who knows, maybe it's real. So what is the evidence for the skunk ape? Well, in addition to all the many anecdotals that we have, there are a few photographs um, none of them are definitive. Most are blurry. There are footprint castings. Again, nothing definitive. There has been hair samples collected, but nothing that's been tested to be proved to be a different unknown species. 
So there have been bits and pieces of evidence, but again, nothing very convincing. It's mostly lots and lots of stories. So let's examine some theories about the skunk ape. One theory is misidentified wildlife. Could be a bear, a bear with mange even. There's a similar theory that chupacabra sightings can be credited to mangy coyotes. Another theory is that some of these sightings can be attributed to escaped zoo animals or pets. Now in a similar vein, there is a big problem in the Everglades with exotic snakes that people took on as pets and those snakes either escaped or they became too big and the people released them into the swamp. Now, I don't know that there's a similar issue with primates, but I have no doubt that there are some, there are small zoos that have pet primates or that there are some Florida men out there keeping pet orangutans like Clint Eastwood, because I mean, everybody loves Clyde. Right turn, but I digress. So that's another possibility, but could escapees from a zoo or a circus or someone's home actually form a colony and survive? We'll talk about that later. Another theory that could explain many of these sightings has to do with the specific population types in Florida and alcohol and or old age. In the book of Genesis, God lists the eight types of people he created in Florida. Okay, not really, but play along. Here are the eight types of people. I'm going to list them. You ask yourself, is this population known to either consume a little alcohol or maybe be getting up there in years and losing their eyesight and hearing? Here we go. College students, spring breakers, Florida man and woman, tourists, snowbirds. These are the people from up north who come down south. Target shoppers, your ordinary average folks, mixed bag there. And Disney people. You know they say they don't. And finally, retirees. Most of those demographics will be in a position where they could likely be inebriated at night or maybe a little confused. Or I know I'm only in my 50s and my eyesight and hearing have changed. So that could certainly have an effect. Another theory is that the skunk ape is an actual cryptid that has been living in the swamps and the forests in the southeast for a very long time. It's a pretty favorable climate, especially for North America. It's warm most of the year around. There's a lot of wildlife, a lot of fruit, a lot of available water, so, and a lot of forested areas. So that part is, makes it possible. Now we could point to one specific example of a surviving colony of rhesus monkeys. They live in the Silver River area of Florida and they are non-natives that descended from amusement theme park escapees and they've been going strong for a while. So that shows that some species of monkey, not ape, could or can survive on its own for a while. The problem is, first of all, these are very small creatures. So they need much fewer calories to survive and they don't need to cover nearly as wide a range in order to get that food. The other thing we have to consider though is that you have to have a decent sized population for any species to survive. You can't just start with two or even four and expect that an entire population will grow and make it for very long. First of all, you have to account for the portion of each generation that doesn't survive childbirth, both the children and the mothers, because there will always be some, especially in the wild. You need to account for the ones that die of disease before they become fertile, die of accidents, or are killed in some way. The ones that don't survive through childhood up to where they can be viable. You have to account for the ones that end up unable to reproduce. That always happens within a population. And then comes the genetic factor. I think the most likely theory though is simply the human mind. Our minds are not as reliable as we like to believe they are. When we see something in the dark, in a strange situation, in a place where we don't expect it to be, when it pops up unexpectedly, when we get only a brief glimpse, or when we're feeling agitated, anxious, confused, or when we have an image in our head already, it is natural for our mind to try to interpret into something that we understand. So if we see the outline of something tall, dark, 
and blobbish moving somewhat like a human would, it's natural for our mind to assign that to something that is familiar to us, which in this case would often be an ape of some sort. And if you already know that there are sightings of this type of creature, or if you've just heard of Bigfoot and you're in a, out in the forest somewhere, it's not unusual for our mind to very honestly and innocently take us in that direction. The human mind is also highly suggestible. Suppose you spend a night in a place that someone tells you is haunted, especially if you're a believer in the supernatural. Even if you don't have a ghost sighting, you're going to be listening very hard for every sound, every squeak, every breath of air. All the little sounds that we normally don't pay attention to, we suddenly start hearing because we're listening for ghosts. Whereas a skeptic, or someone who isn't told that the place is supposedly haunted, will hear the same sounds but not actually register them in their mind. But they certainly won't think of them as supernatural. So in conclusion, I am a bit skeptical about the skunk ape, but I won't say that it's entirely impossible. But either way, it's a lot of fun to think about, and I love this sort of story as fodder for my novels. And if you would like to read an adventure thriller centered around a search for the Florida skunk ape, check out Primitive, a Bones Bone Break adventure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you next time.